Hi, kindergartners, it's Mrs. Ott, and it's time for today's interactive read aloud. Today, we're gonna to be reading the story called Market Day. This is the last book in our author and illustrator study of Lois Ellert. We're gonna be looking at how she brings color and texture to life with her illustrations. So I'm gonna hold this up close to the camera so you can see um, the front cover a little bit better. This book, the front cover of this book has these zigzags. And if you look real close, you can see that the zigzags are embroidered. That means that they're sewn. So you can see the little thread if you look really close. I know it's hard to see from a camera, but that's what it is. This is what fruit? Yep, it's a watermelon and it looks like it's cloth as well. So today in our story, Market Day, I want you to pay really good attention to um, how she creates the illustrations in her book. She's gonna be using fabric and you're gonna see how amazing she is at putting cloth and different things together to make something really bright and beautiful. So our title is called Market Day. Do you know what a market is? A market is a place where you can buy fresh food. So sometimes people would say they're going to the market to maybe get groceries. A farmer's market is a place where you can go to get fresh food um, and other fresh items like honey and flowers from someplace in your local community. So Metamora has a farmer's market in the summertime and you can buy things that were grown locally in the Metamora area. So our book today is going to be about a family who goes to a farmer's market. If you have been to a farmer's market before, can you do this? Very good. Okay. The story on the computer is going to start on the first page, but I'm going to show you. This is the front cover. This is the spine of the book where all the pages come together. This is the back cover. So we're going to turn quick to the title page just so you can see it. And it says Market Day, a story told with folk art. Okay, so this is where we're gonna begin and this is what is pulled up on the computer. Okay, so I'm gonna start reading. Rooster crows, it's early morn. Get out of bed, the chickens need corn. Okay, so we hear some rhyming. Pull up some carrots, shake off the dirt, pack the tomatoes, tuck in your shirt. Friends, look at how cool these illustrations are. You can definitely see that some of the things in the book are sewn like this, but the tomatoes, they look like real tomatoes, don't they? They almost look like photographs cut out. It's really cool how she uses all different kinds of things to create her artwork in her books. Okay. Feed the red rooster, turkey, and goose. Lock the gate tight so they won't get loose. Do you see the corn? We see the animals. Load up the truck. We're ready to go. Pass the fields where the vegetables grow. Pass the birds that perch in the trees. Pass the snakes that sun in the breeze. Pass the fish and frogs that swim near the bridge. And pass the sheep that gaze on the ridge. This is a very busy picture. That means there's a lot of things in it. So I'm gonna give you a second to take a look at all the things going on. 
before I switch it. You can see the fish at the bottom. We can even see the snake, the animals, and the fruit and vegetables. We're all going to market. It's in the town square. To buy and to sell, that's why we go there. Okay, so they go there to buy items and sell things. Here is the market where we work and play. Till the sun goes down at the end of the day. Then we load up, chug over the ridge, go down the road, drive over the bridge. Past the trees, wheels turning fast, past the fields, where we're home at last. Let's eat. All right, so this is the end of our story. So what happens in our story? A family goes to the market to buy and to sell food. Do you remember where they said the market is held? In the town square. Good. Does Metamora have a square? It does. Not every town has a square, but Metamora does and Washington does also. The family sees a lot of different things on their way to the market. What places, animals, and things does the family pass? Okay, so remember, good readers go back to the book and look if they don't remember. That's called finding evidence. Okay, so not that page because that's where they're... Um, they're getting their food. Not here. All right, so now they're loading up the truck and ready to go. All right, so here it says that they go. Let me find my, that page in mine. Past the fields where the vegetables grow. Okay, so they're going to go past the fields. We see vegetables. Past the birds that perch in the trees. Past the snakes that sun in the breeze. Do you remember other things that we're going to pass? Yep, the fish and the frogs, and the sheep. Good job. How do you think the family feels about going to market? Excited? Do you think that they know what they're going to find there? I bet they've probably been there before since they're selling things and buying things. So they probably do know what to expect. So where does this family in our story live? In the city or in the country? Yeah, we can gather that this family lives in the country because they have a farm where they grow crops so they can sell them. Okay, boys and girls, you have heard five different Lois Ellert stories now. This was the last one in our text set. So I want you to think of her illustrations in her books. She has a very special way of creating illustrations. So in this book, you notice some things, some of her books had um, fabric and some of the scenes were made with sewing. 
but you also see that some of the things were put together um, in real life and then maybe she took a picture of it. So in the picture that you see right here, um, you see the man inside um, a um, cart. So that is something that I think maybe she created the cart or she had it as a toy for maybe one of her kids or something. And she had the man and she created this whole scene and then she took a picture of it. So that is really awesome. Um, you can notice that the butterfly here um, was an actual object. It's not a drawing. It was something that was real. Okay, here we see a mixture of different things. We see this sun, it looks like it was a real uh, metal object. We see all different kinds of characters in the story, which I think is what makes it so interesting. I think that the um, pictures are just so beautiful. And the pictures in this book are not the same as the pictures in all of her other books. So when you read Snowball, that one um, was mostly paper that she had cut out and put together using objects. But this one has more um, handmade objects, I guess I would say. It looks like the, um, somebody created this doll um, and sewed it together. Um, let's go to the last page. I'm going to move me over. We're going to go over here to this last page real quick. Why do you think Lois Ellert included this page in her book? Yeah, I definitely think she included this in her book so that you could see all of the different things that she used. And she's got a little description of what it is and what it's made of. That is really awesome. Kind of makes you think about your house. And what do I have around my house that I could use to put together um, to make a really cool picture or to make it illustrations for a book. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our story today and that you're able to see how illustrators can use different forms of media to create some really awesome pictures. Have a great day.